Richard Stubbs from 3X5 in Melbourne. We're going to have perfect balance and do the course perfect pull and win. Thank you, Lord, who wet me? I'm sorry I did. <laughs> you play, but I loved it. But it's not easy being a penguin, <laughs> I can tell you that. It's a long way from Ramsey Street. Now, for some people who have probably never been in the sack together before in their lives. Go! You know, a celebration of Channel 10 wouldn't be complete without a look back at some of the shows that, well, let's say, seemed like a good idea at the time. They weren't uh, great rating successes, but they developed their own cult audience when they were shown in the wee small hours of the morning. So now let's have a look at some of Barry Crocker's cult shockers. Hey. Hey, how about this for an idea? A soapy set on a tropical island paradise. But to save a few dollars, let's shoot it in Melbourne in winter. Yeah, hold it on. Now watch this scene closely for the visible winter breath from the actors. I'm a bit confused. Have <laughs> a part in a movie or not? No, darling. Your friend didn't come through with the check. In fact, it was so cold, Holiday Island's manager, played by Nick Tate, had to scare the guests, in this case Tracy Mann, into using the pool. <laughs> But all was not lost on Holiday Island. The sets made a successful comeback as Lassiter's and Neighbours. Now, there was a show. Who sang that tune? Ne neighbours, doesn't matter. But who remembers this snappy tune from Dougie Parkinson? Maybe you and I were walking to the arcade. Apparently, Ten spent a lot of money on the arcade set because there doesn't seem to have been much left over for rehearsals. Watch Sine and Leon nail this scene with a reading straight from the script. ...most elite families, and I'm not used to being spoken to by mere common... ...dry people, as if I'm as lowly as they are. Uh, really? In 1980, someone had the great idea that if Prisoner was such a success, maybe a male version would be a success too. <laughs> it wasn't. <laughs> Punishment was famous for three things. Maximum security wooden bar. <laughs> Doing a shouting as prisoner Governor Smith. Can't do anything about it now, Hudson. And a very young Mel Gibson seeming to have his mind on a couple of things other than the poignant script. What did you have to do? That's the only time I ever had top billing over Mel Gibson. Still, he never starred in a musical star in his own series, Bobby Dazzler, about an up-and-coming Aussie rock star whose out-of-work ex vaudeville father appears out of the blue after seven years. Bobby! The visitor in this episode is a young Sigrid Thornton. Who am I? Who are you? My name's Anastasia, but I only want to see Bobby. Where's Bobby? <laughs> Christopher Bobby! Oh, I couldn't stand any longer. The music was the interesting part of Bobby Dazzler. Oh, won't you come home, Belle Bailey? Won't you come home? And answer your question, Uncle Oscar. That's the new Freddie Farrell. <laughs> I'll do the cook and Bailey. I'll pay the rent. I know I've done you wrong. <laughs> Remember that rainy evening? I know. Remember that rainy evening? And uh, I had the ukulele. With and we'd sing harmony. It sounded all right. And Johnny was great to work with. And uh, he said, You're exactly like my father. He still calls me dad. I'll do the cooking, Bailey. I'll pay the rent. I know I've done you wrong. Remember that rainy evening I kicked you out with nothing but a fire to call. I know that I'm the blame. Ain't that a shame? Bill Bailey, won't you please come home? Your papa needs ya. Bill Bailey, won't you please come? Shave and a haircut. Yeah. But lo and behold, Crawford's cast me as the, as the motorcycle cop, and I was very grateful. That's that uh, Jackson bloke from the motel. Something bothering you? Yeah, but I, I just can't put my finger on it. Gotcha, Sherlock. I'll head back towards town. I might be able to cut him off.
Made for the O10 network, this police show was set in the fictitious country town of Matlock, which was large enough to support both plainclothed and uniform cops. This gave it an entirely different look to its city counterparts. And the vital link for all the Matlock cops was Shirley, a voice on the radio. Got you, Shirley. See if you can raise Gary, Shirley. Well, Shirley. Solo one receiving. Go ahead, Shirley. VKC Matlock to car six. And this VKC is Shirley. She had been constantly referred to in the series, but never seen until this final VKC episode. VKC Matlock to car six. No, I can't stand snakes. Well, what do you want me to do with it? Get rid of it. Well, I promised it to the biology teacher. He's going to pick it up a bit later. I will not have tiger snakes in my watch house. I was the senior sergeant in charge of the station, so I didn't go out in location, you know, in the storms, the wind and the rain. I used to sit very comfortably in the office there, always on the phone. They said I had the flattest ears in Melbourne because I was always on the phone. No, that was good. Matlock police. My agent rang up and said, look, you've done very well in the audition and they want you to do a Matlock and it's a lead role and uh, it's a terrific script. Um, come in and pick it up and uh, we'll go from there. Anyway, I went and picked the script up and to my horror, it was the part of a woman who was a, an expert horse rider. And uh, I'd said, as we all did in those days, that I could everything, ride a horse, jump out of an aeroplane, anything, you know. And then when you got the job, you'd quickly go and learn how to do it. So anyway, the horse boat arrived and this chap got out and he said, where's the girl who's riding the horse? And I sort of put up my hand rather tentatively and he said, well, I hope you can ride, darling, because uh, this is a, this is an ex-race horse. And the horse just literally took off. I, would, I must have jumped about a dozen fences. And uh, anyway, they found me eventually and I traveled about five kilometers and was hanging on the underbelly of the horse on the saddle. Horse was eating grass and I was sobbing, I think. What are you two old stages up to anyway? Oh, Red and me were talking about the weather and things. He told me he's looking forward to the spring. Oh, Dad, the place looks wonderful. <laughs> um, anyway, it, it turned out all right in the end, but I think it was the panache of that performance on the horse that won me the role in the box, because they asked me after I'd finished that if I would like to come and audition. <laughs>